And welcome to this uh, uh, session on innovations in sexual and repro reproductive health, uh, an area obviously we don't talk much about. Now, uh, there are many ways of approaching this uh, subject, which is, of course, uh, the medical uh, the medical and clinical way is one way to do it. But the other, at least interesting to me, aspect is really talking to young entrepreneurs who are trying to make a difference in this space by creating the interventions as well as some degree of scale. What makes it additionally interesting is the kind of places they're working from and the areas that they're focusing on. And perhaps what makes them young also makes them more aligned to the challenges at hand and particularly of a problem like this, which is more hidden than revealed. On that note, I'm going to uh, hand it over to our three speakers so that they take you through what they're doing. Uh, what I've asked them to do, uh, that's Shivli Srivastava, Priya Lagarwal and Pallavi Banwal, is to talk a little bit about why they got into this area of sexual and reproductive health, the manner in which they've approached it, which is to set up ventures, which are really uh, uh, you know, consumer facing or patient facing uh, ventures, but taking it to some level of scale. And what problem are they trying to solve, uh, particularly in the context of the problem uh, of, of its magnitude in a country like India? How are they doing it? Where do they stand today? So they've got roughly four minutes to speak on that, post which we will have a conversation. And I'm also hoping that if there are any questions, uh, we'll use them to uh, you know, trigger further insights uh, into this subject. So thank you very much, uh, everyone. Thank you to uh, Sankal for inviting me uh, and India Spend to be part of this uh, conversation and this conference. So on that note, uh, Shivli, I'm going to start with you. So why don't you go first? Sure. Thank you so much, Bhavan. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Shivri Srivastav. I am a counseling psychologist and a sexuality educator by profession. And I run uh, Shift Density uh, and Better Space along with my husband, Avilash, who is my co-founder and CTO. So we are based at Raipur Chhattisgarh and we plan to... Um, basically expand to two and three and four five tier cities and the whole idea is that uh, better space is our technology wherein people can go and book sessions with psychologists who speak their vernacular language and who are in their budget uh, friendly like who do budget friendly sessions so uh, the idea is to give therapy sessions to people who need it the most for mental health and sexual health support. Because when you look at small town cities, uh, nobody actually knows any ethical practicing psychologist around them. So that is the problem majorly that we are trying to uh, work on. And how sexual health gets in the uh, gets in this uh, thought process is when uh, basically a lot of people do not like talking to uh, somebody who uh, who is a sex therapist or like they they just get very uncomfortable with the idea of talking about sex to somebody, which is where mental health comes very friendly, wherein they are okay to talk about mental health and under mental health they they will talk a lot about sexual health also. So that is the thought that we are taking if people are comfortable in talking about mental health and under that they are okay to talk about reproductive health, sexual health, LGBT concerns, sexless marriages, couples, uh, divorce, so many things that are very prevalent in small towns. So we try to uh, cater to that. And technology is very, very helpful for us to do that because uh, with phones and with our app, people get more uh, close to our psychologists directly. And we are now launching at Shift Density the offline uh, aspect of it. So now we are tying up with schools, colleges, corporates, industries, and so forth to talk about this in a offline session as well, in an offline manner. So people now can trust word of mouth as well and work towards uh, building a community here who speaks about sexual health and also thrives to work towards it. So that is where we are at. And uh, currently we are starting in six states, which is uh, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, West Bengal, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. And um, we have chosen the two and three tier cities of these places and starting with that. Cool. That's uh, that's very brief. Uh, a quick, quick couple of questions. Uh, one is what made you specifically set this venture up? Um, I wanted to set this venture up because I am uh, myself a psychologist who didn't have any good uh, opportunities in a small town. I was working in Bangalore. I had to quit because, of course, COVID and family issues. And uh, um, when I came here, I didn't get good opportunities at all. And I could see there were so many things that were needed changing. 
and uh, i alone could not do it so i definitely believe in the power of community that psychologists can do and psychologists also don't get the due weightage that they uh, that they should get so when we are talking about healthcare mental health is not at all um, you know addressed in healthcare and sexual health is even not uh, you know working towards it so when we are talking about shift density we work in three like we talk about uh, helping people digest the taboo ka samosa samosa meaning uh, sexuality mental health and disability these three extremely taboo topics which is um, needed so we usually work with psychologists to help people digest these extreme taboo topics and uh, that is why we started with uh, shift density and better space and hope that this helps for people right 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 okay and i'm going to come back on the mental health to sexual health uh, link that you pointed out a little later uh, priyal lagrawal from stand we speak your next hi everyone i'm priyal i have a background in psychology and at stand we speak we are building it as a one stop sexual and reproductive health uh, solutions platform for the younger generation why i essentially developed this solution is because when i was working in a suicide prevention helpline we used to get a lot of calls from young people who had queries related to relationships related to sexual health related to sexuality but i realized we didn't have a credible source of information we don't have a comprehensive comprehensive sexuality education courses at school parents are reluctant to talk about these and we end up uh, trying to find answers on google but we don't really find credible sources so that is why uh, i thought of building the solution but what really triggered and fast paced the process was when i realized that one of my friends she was 19 and she consumed a lot of contraceptive pills to terminate her pregnancy as she was denied these services because she was unmarried so that is why we want to build this as a one stop solution where you can get information products uh services right from access to judgment free healthcare experts resources everything under one platform and and uh, tell us about uh, you know you, you talked about your friend and that being a trigger but uh, is is there something else that you've seen in general where you felt that you know that this problem needs uh, a broader kind of you know a platform to respond and that's one and second is what are the other problems that you know you also seen because uh, because of the kind of case that you just mentioned so some of the issues that i rarely used to see when i was in college was i used to buy condoms from most of my friends even though i was in mumbai i thought that people would be more open but i did not see that culture and i see how reluctant they were to even go to pharmacies and just ask for condoms by themselves so that was one thing that i used to do another thing that i have seen is date, uh, dating violence that is so prevalent but least talked about people just suffer silently but we do not have the words or a space where we can voice out our experiences so that is why i thought of uh, coming up with a solution that caters not just to the sexual health needs but also from the violence perspective from the psychological uh, perspective as well so we even in terms of experts we have psycho medical legal experts so that we can provide a holistic solution to the users got it. and and where are your uh, experts I, i mean are they i'm assuming they're all over the country and you access them online or Yes yes they are all over from all over the uh, country in india and all our services are digital got it okay so we we'll talk about that a little more in a bit uh, pallavi banwal from gentimacy it's over to you yeah hi everyone this is uh, i'm pallavi banwal i'm the founder of gentimacy it is a sex positive pleasure positive platform my own journey of starting this uh, venture was a personal uh, story followed by my uh, you know detailed uh, research to Uh, established the quantum of the problem i was in a sexless marriage and uh, thereafter i i had underwent a lot of sexual trauma and relational trauma in my relationships that sensitized me to this uh, problem on a personal level and followed by that when i started speaking in my circle so i got to know that there there are more people into the same uh, uh, you know uh, problem and then i started blogging about it so i started as a writer i started writing about my own struggles and got an overwhelming response from people who approached me as an expert and thereby i got myself certified in sex education so now i'm running a platform and uh, uh, over a period of time what we have found is the problems are uh, they they run a range so our target uh, audience is between uh, 25 which is like 25 to early 40s 
So we are focusing on working professionals, uh, even as per the Maslow's law hierarchy. If you see that your fundamental needs are met, which is the food, shelter, water, then you are looking for love and belonging and self-esteem. And we are targeting at that evolved need of human beings where, you know, they have everything going right in their professional life, but the personal life is in a mishap. So the problems that we are addressing are porn addiction, sexless marriages, unconsummated marriages, uh, male sexual dysfunction, female sexual dysfunction, and sexual abuse. Uh, these are the problems. And uh, where are we as of now? So we have been a, a cash positive, profit positive company since inception. So I come from a decade old corporate experience. So I've leveraged that experience into setting up my uh, own uh, you know, startup. And uh, uh, primarily, our 60% uh, of revenue comes from the corporate. So we have worked with leading corporates like uh, uh, Plush and uh, Plush Insurance, now Bharat Times, Danik Bhaskar. Uh, so we are also creating sexual wellness content for a lot of media platforms. So we did a tie up with Network 18 for a year uh, in uh, 2021. And then now we are working with now Bharat Times. So that's uh, the media content generation because we have a domain expertise. And then we work with corporates uh, to promote their uh, services. So Say, for example, Shila Jeet, Ashwagandha, so a lot of uh, Dr. Vaidya, so they are coming up with a lot of supplements. So we also promote their uh, content because we have that kind of uh, audience. And we are we, ha we also have consultations uh, from our experts who take a one-on-one -on -one consultations as well as group workshops and courses on sexual wellness problems. Right. Thanks for that. Uh, uh, Pallavi, let me start off with you. So uh, give us a sense on the kind of people who come to you today. I mean, one is uh, demographic and the other is gender. W what's the breakup and where, uh, you know, and including, you know, when I say demographic, I mean, you said 25 to 40. So where is it more and where is it less? So definitely it is uh, inching towards late 20s to early 40s. Because uh, typically uh, we have been focusing on metropolitans, but, but we are not averse to, I would say, that tier two or tier three cities. But majority of our uh, audience comes from the metro cities of the, you know, the high tech city like Bangalore, Hyderabad, Delhi, uh, Chennai, uh, Mumbai. So uh, these are people who have been uh, through relationships or who are in relationships and they already have gone through a certain kind of experience and they are looking either to enhance or, you know, pressing problems in the relationship. Right. And, and do you feel that, yeah, and, and you know, it's uh, as a, in a demand supply context, I mean, do you feel that people are reaching out to you because they're there, because you are there? Or is it that, you know, someone like you uh, has only come now and the, this problem was always there, but obviously suppressed? Yeah. So one of the very interesting, uh, you know, comment I got from a reader that after reading your content, I realized I have a problem. So that that was something like I said, being sensitized to, OK, this is some this is also important. This is also a part of life. Right. Okay. Uh, Shivli, let me come back to you. So uh, you talked about, you know, focusing more on tier two, tier three. So my question is, uh, I, I'm uh, obviously sitting in a bigger city uh, being Mumbai. Uh, why is this different for tier two, tier three versus, let's say, big cities? Uh, and is all this the same? I would think that, you know, there is more uniformity today, mm -hmm. thanks to the internet and so on. Um, the whole idea that there is difference in this is because, um, of course, of the family structures that we live in here. Uh, wherein in tier two, tier threes, um, still people live in joint families, still neighbors talk to each other, still there is everybody knows each other. If I step outside, people would know who I am, whose daughter I am, whose granddaughter I am, everything like that. Whereas if you compare to a bigger city, nobody would actually know or care about knowing. So when it comes to tier two and tier three, the context, the culture, the value, um, the traditions which we follow are very, very different and unique uh, to every state. And even in every state, every portion uh, and language plays a big, big, big role. So in, uh, in tier two and tier three cities, vernacular languages are the main uh, uh, bones of uh, what keeps it together. Uh, whereas, whereas when you go to a Mumbai or a Bangalore or a Delhi, you can survive without knowing any language at all by just speaking English. So um, the context differs because we have to uh, genuinely understand the pulse of the city and the state right. while we are working with them. And, and, and yeah. Right. So I, I, are you saying that uh, uh, because of these structures, uh, which is logical, of course, the family structures and the traditions, I mean, are people more inhibited? Uh, I mean, are they are they opening up uh, more? Are they opening up less? Uh, how, how does it play out then? 
I think there are many people like um, I don't think there is a difference with what they are practicing their sexual behaviors or stuff. I have heard of um, you know um, LGBTQ communities being very active in small mm-hmm. towns. I've heard of people you know every kind of practice that you can think of or which is happening in bigger cities. It's happening in smaller cities. Maybe the numbers and the way people talk right. about is less. So when I'm going out now um, and I talk, people know that I talk about masturbation. People know that I talk about sexual health and reproductive health. There are women from like very, very conservative families who are then talking to me, taking me aside and telling about their problems. And they are looking for solutions online. So uh, I think uh, just by my existence in the small town space, is a huge huge relief to them because then they are like we don't trust or we don't know what the big town people might say but we know and we trust you and that is why we can talk to you about this so that is the hope that we are trying to build uh, so it's already been built in um, chatisgarh to a large extent now we are uh, expanding to other states because of yash so now uh, we hope that other states also understand that and accept us that way right and and therefore you've also addressed the demand supply question uh, that i posed earlier to uh, 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 pallavi i think so uh, the other question now you made a link between mental health and uh, sexual reproductive health now ca- can you take us through that i mean the contours i mean in how many cases do you f- do you see a direct link and how many you know h- how do people themselves uh, think of their own problems and then how do you see it yeah so what i have found from my uh, experience of uh, uh, you know uh, dealing with clients and also my company dealing with clients is um they will look at okay there are these three topics and um, you know they'll be like oh yeah mental health is amazing and they'll talk a lot about mental health in the beginning then they'll start opening up about sexual health you know since you already talk about this i have this also and i have this concern also so um, usually i think mental health becomes the accepted conversation because everybody can talk about stress and anxiety right and they are like you know uh, i have anxiety but then it's about sex it's about my uh, sexual life. identity it's about my relationship that i am in which is queer so um, i think that becomes a very interesting conversation which most of us as psychologists have seen and most of the schools have also talked about where i have worked with and uh, this is a common experience that we have had so um, like even for example when i go to schools and colleges sex education word will not be uttered but then if i say ki life skills education hai and you know in that we are talking about consent abuse prevention safe sex they'll be like yeah yeah do that but don't use the word but tell about it so we are like ki theek hai if that takes it if you know name whatever it is if the content remains the hard and bones of sex education we will do that and that is what is happening and people are receiving it very well where they are not saying pornography addiction they are saying addictions related to you know those films and people are understanding <laughs> so that is how we are uh, talking about it and uh, you know figuring things out in small towns got it uh, uh, priyal and then i'm going to come to pallavi so uh, how are you seeing the link between mental health and uh, srh in uh, and and is that i mean is that uh, is i mean is there a lot of free flow i mean are people clear are you making it clear to your uh, the people who come and uh, visit you or your patients absolutely i would totally agree with what shabli said that it's easier to start a conversation around mental health because people come with issues like she said anxiety about what they're going through but it takes some it takes them some time to open up where that is coming from that is why uh, having a space where you know you provide all of these kind of services in a holistic manner is really important we really see like a direct link because when it comes to even relationships people are they have certain questions they have certain thoughts they have whatever issues that they are going through but they're not able to verbalize it or vocalize it so i think uh, this is a really good technique where we put forth this as a mental health issue and then give them enough space to even explore uh, their other queries but uh, but to what extent is it connected the way you would maybe clinically define mental health and and uh, h- how does that play out uh i think in those terms shivli would be a better person to answer sure. it in clinical terms sure go ahead shivli um, 
Um, so when it comes to clinical, uh, see, honestly, being a professional, I can say 85 to 90 percent. And this is a research that we have done. 85 to 90 percent of concerns that people come with are genuinely situational mental health distress. When you mean situational, it's a situational, like if you can say situational comedy, ki, yeah, uh, the job is gone and the uh, family is unhappy, there is uh, kids we have to look to, you know, all these situations which add up to your problems with sexual health or mental health. And very few, honestly, very, very few rare situations would happen where it will be actual diagnosable mental health concern or issue so clinical anxiety clinical depression is actually quite less to find as compared to situational anxiety and situational depression so when we are working with the masses what we really work towards with shift density is genuinely telling them the difference between the both and telling them that, you know, not like people use mental health as a slang or as a daily, oh, I have OCD or I'm going through depression. But um, what that does is it dilutes the seriousness of the topic. And um, it's okay on some level to normalize it, but it's not okay to then self-diagnose. So that is what we are trying to do. Ki, uh, just because uh, once in a while you don't have good sex doesn't mean that you are impotent or doesn't mean that you are going to have uh, a problem in your marriage or something like that, you know. And just because uh, once you felt attracted to some friend of yours doesn't mean that you are from the LGBT community. Or maybe you are, but that is not a problem as well. So these are the conversations that we really need to have to genuinely normalize the aspect of, uh, you know, diagnosis versus this, because people are really scared of diagnosis and diagnosis is nothing wrong. You know, like if you get a diagnosis of um, a fracture or a, a fever, you will not freak out, which people do when they free, uh, laugh, learn about their diagnosis of depression or anxiety, which is quite common and curable to a large extent. So that is what people need to know. Right. And that's a very important point. Pallavi, anything that you want to throw into this? I mean, yes, uh, as a part of like, you know, we, uh, my positioning is it's a part of wellness because uh, again, uh, over with increasing this possible incomes, people are becoming, in, you know, sensitized about that. Okay, I need to be fit. Like this was something, not a conversation, you know, 30 years back where someone would go to a gym. And, like, we, our parents never went to gym or our parents never had a yoga or dietitian. But today the, the mindset is changing. People are becoming more aware of their higher needs. And this is where I'm saying it's a very critical part of your well-being. And uh, of course, like, uh, you know, Shirley said that self-diagnosis happens. And then uh, uh, they, again, denial runs very high because it takes years for someone to accept a problem. So if you see the cycle of, you know, the first uh, sign of a problem and the first attempt of the person reaching out for a solution, that's quite uh, you know, extended compared to the West where people are much more open and, uh, you know, non-judgmental. So uh, I think this is where uh, our uh, uh, like content helps because, you know, when you keep talking about it, when you keep having such forums, it just, uh, uh, you know, uh, builds that uh, normalization to normalize the topic that this is quite normal. So I also see in my forums, like, uh, you know, women have started participating on uh, topics like orgasm or uh, topics like sexual desire, which was very... Uh, unprecedented to see a woman actively, you know, talking about it on a public forum. Right. So let's talk about the normalization to scale and which I guess is the is the future for all of you and anyone who wants to get into this space. And let me come back to you, Pallavi. So one of the hindrances to normalizing is self-diagnosis, uh, which is mostly Google. So how are you seeing this and or addressing it if you are? I mean, yes, I, uh, as a profession, I have, uh, you know, strive to always keep my... Uh, credentials updated so we are also coming up with a uh, I have also trained a lot of psychologists in university so we, we say that this is something you know it, it's like a it's, it's a field where you need to have the academic qualification in sex therapy sex therapy is recognized and best but unfortunately in India sex therapy there is no such discipline it is sexology so uh, you know one way is to even uh, share my own credentials on a public platform where I keep so I did a 
certification on you know the sexual desire of mothers after uh, pregnancy or postpartum depression so that's a very specialized topic that people don't even know ppd and they don't even know that you know there can be a problem of sexual desire after ppd so one thing is to uh, build that credibility as a professional um, uh, so people again look for credentials so that's one thing the second thing about uh, uh, you know normalization is um, where uh, we also uh, try to create that uh, build that language you know that language is very important so for example i had this uh, client who is suffering who has a fear of intercourse so she has heard from you know her women friends that okay it's painful and that the word they use is penetration which is a i feel is a very violent word so we said okay what about invitation or what about so we need to have a very refined language you know unfortunately there is a lot of slang when it comes to usage of genitalia or the porn so people think it is something grotesque so we try to create we say we are the country of kama sutra and that's the heritage that's where we come from we have actually taught the world how to have you know sex or how how to actually have a sexual uh, fulfilled life 5000 years back that's our heritage so we i use a lot of you know uh, mythology i use a lot of spirituality i use a lot of storytelling to normalize because uh, it's it should become a bedroom conversation we should talk about sex like we talk about weather got it priyal uh, what's your sense i mean uh, you talked about the google part right people uh, go to google and then obviously try and say which of course happens across the clinical spectrum not just in mental health but what what's your sense on uh, what can we do and because as you solve that problem you're also obviously institutionalizing the whole space and uh, making people like you yourself more effective so in order to solve that issue because it's really difficult to find medical or legal answers on google we are building this as a credible source of information we have built an anonymous platform which is called me over there uh, it's a bot that answers your question so we have a team of experts sitting behind who are curating all the answers for the users so we make sure that all the answers being provided to the users are verified and are by experts we are also building digital content because people like watching and learning as well so we are uh, experimenting with different modes of learning right from text to videos we also have a podcast and to ensure uh, that it's of the quality that we want users to know we uh, we have different experts and we are also training our experts uh, with providing queer affirmative services with providing uh lgbtq friendly answers so that is uh, the kind of thing that we are doing to ensure that people receive reliable information and services that they require so let me put that uh, i mean i i could maybe pose this to all of you but uh, let me start with you again priya so when when you, when if you want to tell someone uh, that why they need to go to someone like you uh, what is, and and you know people may say okay this is a very localized problem or a specific problem and it's okay if i don't address it i mean life goes on and uh, you know i mean and there are other things in my life that i need to address but but i'm sure what you're trying to argue or all of you are trying to argue this is very interlinked uh, you said mental health to uh, I, i'm sure happiness and so on so do you want to build on that priya yeah sure uh, we do say that you know we have other things in our life but this is one thing if we have any question related to this on our mind it doesn't skip it comes back again and again you are stuck until you find the solution now you might search it on google you might look for it on other platforms you might want to talk to it with a friend or someone but until you find that answer you would you know you would still search for it and now uh, when you search for it you don't really know where to go to so i have a lot of people who come to me and say oh you know i was trying to find this answer in the incognito mode because i didn't want any other like someone else to know what we are going through but now that we have this platform we know that we can ask these questions openly okay. so we say that we deny that we don't really care about these issues but deep down we do and we are constantly looking for such uh, services Okay, uh, Shivli, uh, why why should people pay more attention to the kind of uh, services that uh, organizations like your offers? I think people um, should care about it because um, I think everybody has that problem in some way or the other in some point of their life. So one of the most common things that I hear from people is um, a couple of my clients who have come to me, uh, uh, Better Health and Tool. Um, um i have ayushman khurana wali problem you know uh, so the whole ayushman khurana wali problem is he has done a lot of movies on sexual health 
and one of those movies ka one of the things he uh, the person has seen and they are like yeah i have that problem now it's up to the psychologist to decode what that is and to help you know so um, what happens with better space is that uh, when people are coming to us um, most of the times they are just curious on what a therapist looks like what do they do what do they ask is it just like beers in the ghee is it different you know so a lot of bollywood uh, comes to uh, or like bollywood plays a huge role with uh, our clients who come to us and uh, being in small town these are the way they pe- the, the people talk and um, you know uh, so uh, therapists are also taught to you know speak their language and to understand what it is so with better space um, we get like the platform is open for anybody to go find the psychologist who they like you know somebody's qualifications you like somebody has written some blog that you like somebody has prizes that uh, you like somebody's uh, way of uh, charging you like so there are so many different aspects to what you need and what happens in usual mental mm. health forms is that when a person goes they are they tell their problem to somebody anonymous uh, somebody from the uh, company who will be taking an intake you don't know their qualifications yeah, or if they are uh, the correct person to be talking or not and uh, once you tell you are assigned by a psychologist by the firm only and you don't have a lot of choice in making uh, you know in saying that okay I, i want to be with this person and not this person so that leads to a lot of drop out also that right. uh, you know you feel so hesitant to talk ki firstly it's not the topic that i need to talk about now somebody is talking to me which is doing me a big favor and now how can i say that this is not working then there must be something wrong with me that is what mostly people go through so which is why with uh, better space we uh, give them we give the uh, uh, freedom to the person to choose and also we are uh, we have an escrow system wherein uh, once the therapy session is done unless and until the client says yes the session was done the money is not given to the psychologist which protects the psychologist which protects the uh, customer and it reduces the amount of uh, problems that will be caused got it okay so uh, uh, we are going to come to the sum up and in the sum up uh, uh, so that i give you some time to prepare uh, we're going to talk about really what do you need to build this further uh, uh, what are the barriers that you're trying to cross and how, how could we uh, cross that more effectively just a quick question and uh, let me come back to maybe priyal uh, and then palavi uh, do people is, is the digital uh, world helping you in, in as much as uh do people like to uh, uh talk to uh you know digitally or online or is this something that would maybe more be more efficient uh in person uh priyal in my experience i really believe that digital space is better because uh, the population hmm. that we're targeting it's quite young and this also gives us an opportunity to reach out to a wider audience when i was conducting workshops i was conducting workshops in mumbai in chennai all of that was online and i realized that since they have so many issues i can't be everywhere and it's better to create one space where masses can reach out to rather than you trying to reach out to individuals that is why yep. we build this as a completely digital space it also gives users uh, enough space for example if they want to see concerts at the 11 at night 12 at night they have access to this rather than trying to go out and find people nearby right okay uh, pallavi what's your sense i mean is i know digital will expand your reach but what about effectiveness definitely i mean uh, uh, of course uh, see this nothing can be in person so i always see that that's where we are also i started uh, uh, you know create, uh, launching in person workshops so uh, but definitely digital is something on an educational level and as priyal said that in terms of reach like uh, even we have seen uh, you know some of my uh, our videos have ro- like reached 12 million views or 30 million views so this was very unprecedented to see that that kind of you know number of viewership even though because typically what happens is when people you know uh, the information if you st- uh, stop that information it will people will not think so when you keep streaming as like line of information it makes people think it makes people you know talk about this so i think that continuity is very important because that continuity might be difficult to maintain offline due to logistical challenges so yeah got it okay so uh, quick sum up from uh, all of you let me uh, start with you priyal and go back uh, 
you know what are you seeing ahead as the challenges uh, what are your own uh, growth targets if one were to call it that and what could hold it back uh so if i talk about my experience when i started i thought that this is a very uh, niche area where i was working on and i was working all alone but over the last three years i see that we have received recognition from the world bank we have received recognition from united nation agencies so more and more people are focusing on this right now and the major challenge we see is mainly in terms of marketing because all of these policies by different social media channels they have restricted talking about even the normal things that that we do in sexual and reproductive health so that is one challenge that i see coming up okay uh, palavi so uh, i would say it's at the uh, level of research and development and outreach uh, r&d because you know there, there is a cutting edge research in west uh, which unfortunately we have not been able to you know keep up with so uh, for example one of the pelvic floor uh, specialists in west uh, she is a doctor and she is launching a course on pelvic floor exercises to increase the sexual desire of women and in india there is nothing uh, such sort of heard that you know by doing a certain physical exercise you can regain your sex drive so all of that research i want to bring i've already you know uh, did a lot of investments and i'm looking for further this area needs like uh, it, it's it's a you know there's a need of the art to create that cutting edge research and development in sexual wellness in india and secondly uh, definitely the outreach because a lot of people are not even aware that some we exist got it okay uh, shivli last word uh, before that uh, just a question i think uh, if i don't know who wants to take it but we've only got 3 minutes left uh, what are the privacy mechanisms that are put in place to guarantee confidentiality for customers uh, anyone wants to take that very quickly sure i can take it um, yeah, for you see we have a very uh, strong privacy policy when it comes to um, our platform better space and also when it comes to psychologists dealing with uh, clients uh, every ethical practicing psychologist has a confidentiality form has practices confidentiality very much and the psychologists that we take in we also don't talk to each other about oh this is your client or these are the concerns we definitely discuss about the concerns in general about like let's say 40 year old man has this concern but who is that person we never discuss and uh, that is something that um, we as a professional uh, need to take in order to guarantee the privacy okay and and shivi how are you seeing uh, i mean the road ahead uh, how what are the opportunities challenges yes um i think uh, to a large extent i agree with uh, priyal and uh, pallavi both with regards to uh, like marketing being a big challenge for the longest time our social medias were banned because we used one word uh, sexuality in one of our posts so uh, that is definitely a challenge but i think more than that i see a lot of opportunities more than challenges because i feel very accepted and uh, thankfully being in this field for now 2 years um company has been taken very nicely and warmly by the people around us so i see a lot of opportunities i see a lot of growth for uh, shift density and with, which means including uh, increasing the number of psychologists increasing the number of sessions and offline outreach because for us it's not just about digital of course it di- digital is a uh, very very important part but we are also doing something offline so that it's a hybrid model and uh, both of them come together and w- uh, one opportunity that i'm looking forward to and i want to address and like put it out here which is looking for investors looking for people who are like minded because most of the times uh, in my thought process that has been a, a problem for me and a challenge for me um, like i said to you earlier it's easier to get funds when you are in a delhi bombay and bangalore it's very difficult uh, for small towners like us to then get the funds that we deserve or we need uh, so looking for that and looking to meet similar minded people who would be as excited and passionate about sexuality mental health and disability as we are in work to build this together right and uh, and i do wish you all the best i i do hope investors uh, potential and otherwise are listening to you and will come to see you in raipur uh, and yes. not necessarily expect uh, you to visit them in delhi <laughs> bombay or bangalore so on that note uh, we run out of time completely uh, it's been a pleasure speaking to you and i do wish you from our uh, end all the very best in this very important endeavor as well and thank you to avishkar for uh, hosting us here uh, and i'd like back to the organizers for the next session